Okay, let's set up MySQL. The first thing we do is to install a MySQL database server on the local computer. You don't have to do this if you just want to use a MySQL database. Your CS3 account gives you a MySQL database on CS3, and you can always use that. But having a local MySQL setup makes things easier for development, and uh, also it lets you to play database administrator, which you cannot do with the database on CS3. And uh, most of all, it's pretty easy to do, so uh, why not? We go to mysql.com and uh, we download the mysql installer. There are a couple of packages here. One is called uh, mysql installer web community and the other one is called mysql installer community. The difference, as you can see, is that the web community is pretty small. It uh, will download the components you need during installation on demand and uh, MySQL installer community is pretty big. You, uh, it contains everything, so you don't have to download anything during installation. Uh, my internet connection is pretty decent, so I'll choose the web installer and only pick the ones I need during installation. No need to log in or sign up. Just click uh, no thanks. And uh, this gives us the installer. <coughs> So let's start it up. Well, it's a bit slow. Okay. And uh, we install MySQL products, accept, next, execute, next again. Okay, here you can choose the components you want to install. And uh, when in doubt, choose developer default. But uh, I know what I want, so I'll choose custom and uh, go to next screen. We want the server, of course, and uh, we also want the MySQL workbench. That's important. MySQL notifier, I don't think I need that. And uh, also not the MySQL for Excel. Utility sounds important, so I'll leave that there. And uh, MySQL connectors. We already have the JDBC driver, and I don't need any of the others. So uncheck everything. Documentation, I'll look up documentation online. So that leaves us with server, MySQL workbench, and uh, MySQL utilities. That should do it. Next, execute. Okay, so it's downloading. I probably should have got the, the full package. I guess my internet connection is not as fast as I thought, but not too bad. Okay, 
next and then next. For configuration, we'll choose development machine and uh, the default port for MySQL is 3306 and uh, we don't want to see the advanced configuration. And uh, my root password is ABCD. Normally, I would uh, recommend against such a weak password, but uh, this database is only going to be used locally. We won't even accept uh, outside connections, so it's uh, safe enough. And uh, also, normally, I would add additional user account here, but I'll skip that step. Later on, we'll create a user account using SQL script. And the service name, that's OK. And that's it. So now we have a local MySQL server, and that's great. And by, oh, uh, it automatically starts in MySQL Workbench. Let's try it from the, from the menu. OK, so this is a MySQL Workbench. It uh, listed three connections already. I think two of them are from our previous, uh, my previous setup. So let's delete those two connections. And uh, this is the default connection when you first install MySQL. And uh, this connection, if you look at the details of the connection, it goes to the local host, logging as a as as root and uh, the password is let's store abcd in the bot and test connection okay so let's connect is it connecting okay now we are connected so at this step, now we know that uh, we have a local MySQL server and we can use MySQL Workbench to connect to the server. And uh, then we want to run this script. So this script does a few things. First, it creates a database. And here the database is called CF320STO31. And uh, it will also create a user called CF320STO31 with a password. And then it will create a table with some data in it in this database. The reason we want to do this step is that uh, later on, we will develop some applications on our local computer using our local database and then we'll have to deploy those applications onto the CI3 server. So what we are doing here is what we are we are trying to create a database name that is the same as the database name uh, on the CI3 and also we, are, we want to create a user which has the same username as the account on CI3. This way when we develop applications, we can use uh, the same database and username. And then when we deploy the application onto CS3 server, we don't have to change anything. So uh, for so for uh, here, uh, obviously, you would want to change um, CS320 SDO31 to whatever database or account name that you have on CS3. Uh, yours may be you know, STO01, 02, or something like that. And my account is uh, STO31. So uh, this is uh, basically it. Uh, the purpose of doing this is basically to create the same environment on your local computer so that when you deploy your code on CS3, you don't have to change any, anything. Otherwise, you might have to change your database name or, or username before uh, deploying it. To run a database script in MySQL Workbench, we open we open that script and uh, we run it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And uh, if we refresh, we can see that uh, this is a newly created database and. Uh, 
this is a newly created table. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so once we have that, we can test it in our code. I have a couple of files here for testing. The first file is a servlet, and the second one is a JSP file. And uh, both of them connect to a local database. Notice that uh, it's connecting to a database called CS320STU31 on localhost with username this one, password this one. So let's put it in my Eclipse. And let's put it here. JSP and uh, let's run it. And uh, the URL should be hello JDBC. Okay, so it shows milk and beer, and uh, that's what we had in the database. So that's great. And uh, let's try hello sql.jsp. It shows milk and beer again. Great. So now we know that the local setup is uh, perfectly done. And uh, then we have to try this on the on CS3. So let's actually before we deploy it on CS3, we have to set up our our database on CS3 so that the database will have that table uh, with that data. And uh, to do that, we need to connect to the database, my database on the CS3 server. And uh, there are several ways to do it. Actually, let's do it in using MySQL Workbench. MySQL Workbench will create a new connection. And uh, I'll call it CS3, 20 CS3, at CS3. The host name is, of course, CS3.cast.la.edu. Port is the default. And the username is 320STO31. Password is ABCD. Default schema, that's the default database, which is also CS320STO31. And OK. And then let's connect. OK. So now we are connected, and uh, there's no table in there yet. So let's create a table. Now uh, we only need this part because we are not going to create in, going to create new users or new databases. So just this part, and then run it to check if everything is in there. We'll do a select star from items. And it shows milk price quantity, beer price quantity. Right? That's the content of the items table, so it's in place. And uh, now we have populated our, our database on CS3. We can deploy our code to CS3. And uh, where is the code? The code is under workspace CS yes, three twenty, and we have a servlet. So that's the hello JDBC. Oh, wrong account. It's this one. Classes servlet. Let's copy over hello JDBC. And then 
Let's copy over Hello SQL. Okay. And uh, don't forget to attach web.xml. Okay. And uh, let's try it. Hello, JDBC. There we go. And hello, SQL.jsp. And that's it. Notice that uh, we didn't change any code when we deploy our code to CS3. And uh, that's because locally, it's using a database called CS320 STO31 with this username, this password. And also, uh, once it's deployed onto CS3, it's still using a local database with the same name, uh, same username and password. So that's the benefit of creating the creating a local database uh, with the same username and password. Uh, like we did before, so that uh, uh, when we deploy the code to CS3, we don't have to change anything. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, as you can see, it's really uh, pretty straightforward.